80 years today since Benjamin passed away in the Hobart Zoo and we thought what better a day than National Threatened Species Day to make available for everyone to view and to judge our video of what we believe is a thylacine roaming the Adelaide Hills in South Australia. So what we're seeing here is some footage that was obtained by a lad in February this year. First couple of screens that come through you can see the animal's head. It looks towards the camera then it turns away and just keeps going about its business. In the next few frames you can see the body of the animal. It does appear to have some sort of dark discoloration on the body which may or may not be stripes. The last couple of frames of the footage you can clearly see it has a very distinct hock on its rear foot. It has a long stiff pointy tail. Where the tail connects to the body is very wide at the base which is typical of a thylacine. We believe our footage to be footage of a small thylacine moving around through the Adelaide Hills only 20 minutes from the CBD of Adelaide. We've stabilised it a bit there. Brilliant lighting, phenomenal. It looks like stripes. To me, the distinctive tail joining as a kangaroo's would is, is absolutely profound. As a professional scientist, uh, I have to back up the time I'm spending on my research in terms of what it's going to produce. Any scientist who closes their mind completely about what's being recorded out there in the wild, sightings, tracks are not evidence. We need a body to change that statement that the animal is extinct. And you can only say you have to keep an open mind. 1866, we have all our cuttings from 1866. We went to the Australian Rare Fauna Research Association conference. Their database has literally thousands and thousands of sightings of unusual animals, uh, some quite definitively identified as what people thought was a thylacine or a big black cat or some other large feline type predators. We showed the video that we've got of what we believe is a South Australian thylacine. Everyone at the conference was uh, in agreement that it was definitely not a fox and certainly not a dog. So the main focus of our, of our research is to gather the evidence to prove that there is definitely some cryptid animals of a native variety cruising around the bush still. That's not a bad hair sample. Well, when they put their foot down, they angle their foot, it starts rolling forward and as it rolls forward, if the ground's soft enough, then you'll get the imprint of the, the claw of the thumb. Just about everybody we meet along the way uh, is just an everyday Australian. There's nothing unique or special about them, yet they have these experiences. Some of them are quite life-changing. Some people are in shock for weeks after they see some of these animals because they can't believe their eyes. But we both were very dumbfounded. I thought I was looking at a fox getting closer and then it was like, wow, what was that? It had a bigger, you know, snout and okay. chunkier snout. Similar to that? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's that's one of the best taxiderms I've seen, that one. Oh, okay. he's, he's in really good shape, that one. And it wasn't mangy, it had lines, and it was just... You mean like stripes? Yeah, yeah, definitely stripes. Definitely had dark lines, like stripes. Never seen any, anything. I mean, we live out on a farm, so... I, you You've know, seen plenty of foxes before. Lots of them. When you have multiple witnesses observing the same animal at a close distance in broad daylight for... You know, one, two, three minutes sometimes, it's very hard to convince four or five people that what they saw was a mangy fox when they all describe the same thing and their description fits a thylacine. I walked up through the tea tree and that and there was this grey striped animal. It was pale grey and it had dark grey stripes on it. There was a big one and a smaller one and then there was this reddish brownish one laying there. They all put their head up and looked at me. They were sunbaking. The babies put their heads up and looked at me and then they laid down. Yeah, put my lights on high beam and there was this you know, strange animal. I knew what it was because I'd actually you know, looked at photographs of the thylacines over the years and uh, it was definitely one of them going up the bank as you could see the tail and uh, a few of the stripes on the back of the body.
I reckon over the years, because I was actually working shift work and I'd come home between midnight and three o'clock and I reckon I saw this at least uh, probably five or six times. Even my wife didn't believe me that I was seeing them until she was with me one night and saw um, one of them uh, going up the bank where I had seen it previously many times, doing exactly what it had been doing other, other periods. This time it was probably around midnight. South East South Australia in particular during the 1960s when there was a lot of clearing going on, had some really strong solid sightings from people that were quite reputable, you know, professional people, doctors, lawyers, land agents, police officers, all sorts of people were seeing these animals. It was between my Maya Maya and the Gap, I'd say. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, I, I get it from memory because I have fairly good memory. And I'm going, <laughs> like this, and by the time I turn around, around and the they're back, gone right? in the bushes. We've had a continuous uh, amount of sightings go on right through the 70s up until present time. So there's every indication there that thylacines were never extinct on the mainland, certainly not in South Australia. Those people who are out chasing sightings, chasing tracks in the bush, one has to admire them and hope that they will come up with an animal, preferably alive, but if not dead, um, that will change the scientific perspective upon the species that it is extinct. All power to you and everybody else who's doing that.